How's it going, everybody? Winter Kills here. Welcome to, I believe, episode 15 of the top replays and highlight series. Of course, um, well, not always, but this week in particular, there should be some pretty funny Twitch clips uh, from recent streams down in the description below. Don't forget to check those out uh, after the video is over. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some pretty good ones in here. And uh, you might already be able to tell by the title of this video, uh, this is a Mermail only top replays and highlights because that's uh, all I really have this week is Mermail replays because I've actually been playtesting that deck a lot uh, post Eternity Code over on my stream. By the way, speaking of my stream, on February 9th, I'm going to be doing a charity live stream for Wires of Australia, of course, uh, in wake of the recent and still occurring bushfires uh, i want to help raise money using this platform that i've been given uh, and have created over the years to help raise money for them they are an amazing nonprofit organization uh, that helps to rescue and care for animals that have been impacted by these terrible terrible fires so uh, that is happening on february 9th uh, there'll be some incentives for donations uh, we'll be doing some giveaways as well and it should be a super fun and interesting stream and it's going to be for a great cause as well so if you can make it out to one of my streams i highly recommend it be that one uh, because again it's going to help support a great cause so i'll leave a link to that google doc giving more information on what the stream will be about down in the description below so yeah let's get into the first replay as most of you know this is of course a post eternity code build of mermail uh, which i will be profiling soon irl on the channel against salmon great uh post new ban list uh, opened up a rather unfortunate hand of course no mirage stalio to go to uh, but playing the Dante and the Horse Prince in his extra deck. So um, I believe I end up going first as that is the way I want to play this deck going forward or come Eternity Code. Even currently, I'd opt to play this deck going first. But Deep Sea Aria giving unparalleled access to the Deep Sea Diva, allowing it to combo off here, going into Anemone to be able to bring back the Swap Frog and setting up basically part one of some uh, interruptions to have later on, loading up the graveyard a bit more, resolving Megalo now. Summoning back that Swap Frog, putting another one into the graveyard, going into Totally Awesome, and then also following up by going into the Crocosaur, which on Summon lets you draw up to the cards of non-tuner uh, materials used for its Summon. So in this case, we used one, uh, so we drew one. I do have a combo that lets you draw three uh, using Draco Sack, which I believe I uh, showcased in the test hand video that I made for Mermails recently, so check that out if you haven't already. Now going to resolve the Pot of Avarice, Put back all those clutch cards um, and end up drawing into an infantry, no less, which is going to be really great to help clear multiple cards. So he's going to go for the uh, Bailings and the Buffalo. Uh, doesn't chain block the Buffalo here. I don't know if that was on purpose because maybe he really needed the field spell, whatever it may be. Um, but nonetheless, uh, he is going to, I'm going to negate that with the Toad. Then he's going to go ahead and summon the Spinny. And then I'm going to use Crocosaur here to discard two to destroy a card. And since I discarded the infantry, I can destroy an additional card. Making sure I do destroy the Spinny first so he cannot protect with Bailings later. Uh, but nonetheless, Crocosaur coming in very clutch there uh, to just put up multiple interruptions out of its own, not even including cards like Totally Awesome. Uh, it's just such a fantastic card. It's an amazing discard outlet. And the fact that you can discard multiple, like up to two infantries off that and pop three on the opponent's turn, which is absolutely incredible. So this next replay here is called How Does He Always Open the One Of? Uh, I would highly recommend you guys check out the corresponding Twitch clip to this one down in the description. Uh, so here I am in this one playing against GMJJ, which is a, a long time, I believe, uh, Twitch follower, uh, follower of the channel on Twitch. And he's also a long time player of Necroz. Um... But his Necroz build is extremely unorthodox, as you can probably already tell, seeing this Time Lord in his opening hand, the fact that it's also a 60 card build. Uh, I believe if I even go into the extra deck and show you some things in here, uh, you can see just how kind of obscure uh, it is starting to look. Um, but uh, I'm going first with Mermels here, and despite what happens, I still pull off a really, really cool combo. As you can see, that one of I'm talking about is, of course, Unicorn. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way he's going to open up the one of Unicorn, but of course my luck would have it that he does. And of course alongside it opens the Kaleidoscope, but luckily for me I'm able to go Megalo into Diva into Prince of course, starting off with a very, very productive turn. Able now to pull off that draw three combo I was talking about earlier, 
with Draco Sack and Crocosaur, of course, using those two level three tokens from Draco Sack to be able to go into Crocosaur and draw three, drawing into Instant Fusion and Avarice. Absolutely amazing draws there, allowing me to go into Bahamut Shark with the help of Cross Sheep to get totally awesome out on the field. Summoning out another Megalo and discarding a Gund here, which will be able to bring back another Megalo to set up a rank seven play and also make my Mizuchi live. You can see I'm also having the, uh, the copy of Sphere. Uh, in the main deck, this was just something I was experimenting with. I don't think I'll play, uh, continue to play it going forward. Uh, now, this is a field that I probably could have also made an Appaloosa with. Um, had I would summon the Stingray, um, I could have linked off this, this, and the uh, Bahamut Shark for an Appaloosa, which probably would have won me the game. Um, but uh, I just really didn't have the, the room at the time being to fit Appaloosa in there, but I'm definitely going to try to fit it in going forward. Um, so he starts off a Cyclone. That, of course, is going to bait out uh, the Mizuchi. And then he's going to go into Time Thief, uh, Time, or not Time Thief, rather, but Time Maiden. And I'm actually going to end up negating one of his incantations, um, because I figured I should just try to stop some of the first things that he does. Um, he summons the Time Thief, and then, like, I mean, at this point, I'm really just hoping with the little cards he has in his hand that he doesn't have the One of Unicorn. Because if he had the One of Unicorn, that's pretty much the only thing that he could have that would pretty much shut me down completely, uh, because that just literally turns off everything I have. Now... The timer on YGO Pro that I'm sure most of you guys know about, that pesky, pesky timer when playing online on YGO Pro, was ticking down very, very slowly, or very, very fast, I should say, and I wasn't paying attention to it, uh, because I was so, like, just in shock that this man had opened the one of Kaleidoscope, not one of Kaleidoscope, but I'm sure, like, the, maybe the two of Kaleidoscope, uh, in the main deck here, which, uh, yeah, the two of, two of Kaleidoscope, that I'm seeing in here uh, with a one of Unicorn. So I'm like, I'm just absolutely baffled at this, a little salty, and I'm not paying attention to the timer. And then I just, I lose because the timer runs out there essentially. Um, I don't think I would have actually lost the game, but I just wanted to show how like incredible it was that he opened the one of Unicorn and just the clip essentially to go with it. Go check that one out down in the description, but still a really cool board I was able to end on there uh, with the help of Crocosaur and of course the Cross Sheep. So this next replay here is just titled Mermail Double Toad. Pulling off a Double Toad with what looks to be a very subpar hand in Mermail. There's no Prince access, no Diva access, no Teus, nothing like that. Or at least to start. Playing against a very interesting build of Pendulums. Drawing into Teus here, which I guess I get access to it, but I get access to the Prince as well too. But uh, goes from a very, very subpar hand. With the help of Moray of Greed, be able to draw into more uh, better extenders, which is what that card does best. Using Cross Sheep here to bring out Mud Dragon, and then Cross Sheep, uh, or instant fusion, bring out Mud Dragon, Cross Sheep, bringing out Dragoons, going into the Bahamut Shark, summoning out Totally Awesome, linking into Alacia, summoning a Megalo now, and, uh, you know, bringing out a Pike and a Dragoons off of the Gund and the uh, Neptibus, going into a second Shark now, summoning out another Toad. And again, here is where I could have gone into that Appaloosa with potentially uh, three materials here. So two Toad Negates, the Appaloosa, and the Spell Negate with the interruption from the Lacey and the Infantry. Would have been a really, really solid turn, 100%, uh, but I definitely got to try to fit that Appaloosa in there somewhere. The Continuous Spells, the bane of Mizuchi's existence, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Elacey here, pop a scale. He's going to play this other one, and he's just going to scoop right then and there, really uh, realizing he doesn't really have much else that he can do now this next replay here is called mermail plundering i don't know why exactly it's called that but i am playing against the dark magician deck uh, of course i believe he is uh might actually be playing the new magician souls card i'm not entirely sure uh if he is playing it in here but i believe by the time this was recorded uh it was probably out so maybe just opting not to play it to test for a more budget build obviously that card is ridiculously expensive so i don't blame him i uh, 100 but it has a turtle soul with strike and the circle setup and i'm gonna go with the uh the swap play here uh to start baiting out this back row i want to get this to the totally awesome on board before i do anything else and lo and behold it does bait out a solemn strike so i'll be able to use the add back effective toad and then i go for diva into marksman nonetheless here because I'm, I'm trying to set up the double diva. Um, that's really all I'm trying to do. It's not a good play. Um, it's just a play I wanted to set up nonetheless. So you can see me here. Go for the double diva. I, I don't know why I did, but I do it anyways. I go for Bryanac. Bounce two. Uh, and then I'm using the effective Dragoons here now to be able to search Lapis Dragon. And I believe I Synchro here into the Adamasia Rise. 
Use Marin Cess Coal and Nemony now. Bring back the Swap Frog. So I'm actually getting into a bit of a better field here. It looked like I absolutely had nothing, but it turned into something really good. And I'm actually able to close out the game right then and there with having a Spell Trap Negate for next turn and a Generic Negate uh, as well from the Toad. So pretty cool replay there. Getting greedy with a Double Diva, but I wanted to pull it off because I just wanted to say that I did essentially. So not that I would really recommend it, but here we have Marin Cess. Uh, with Magician Souls, as you can see, he's playing uh, the Pascalus as well. This actually might be a game too, so I don't know if he's actually main decking the D Nibiru or not, but uh, playing the Magician Souls and the Pascalus nonetheless, so adding some great consistency to Marin Cess. Uh, but I get started here, open up the upstart, go into the Diva. Uh, basically playing five copies of Diva with Deep Sea Aria. This card is nuts. I cannot wait for it to come out into the TCG once Eternity Code drops. Adding Moon Glacier, now adding Lapis Dragon, I believe going for the Cloth Sheep setup. Uh, summoning out Mud Dragon and then Clashy bringing out the other piece of the puzzle, uh, which is Dragoons going for Bahamut, going for Toad, setting up that Mulan play, linking that off here. Unfortunately, to go into Alacia, I made of a bit of a, a bit of a scuffed board here. Um, I, I could have, I was trying to maybe set something up with uh, the uh, Anemone, but it ultimately failed in the execution. I negate Magician Souls. Uh, Mizuchi negates the sign at mining and then I have the Alacia with the infantry for the blue tang to close it out right then and there So a pretty subpar field stopping uh, Marin Cess Magician Souls dead in its tracks nonetheless So this last replay, I don't think it's too extravagant other than uh, me just pulling off recycling all my goons all of the goons with the Pot of Avarice, of course, being the best thing that you can now do with Pot of Avarice and Mermels is recycle all those beautiful, crispy Dragoons back into the main deck in one fell swoop and draw two cards, of course, in the process. Now summoning out Lapis Dragon, linking the Cross Sheep. Going for the beautiful Instant Fusion play. I love this play so much. It's so great. I cannot wait for Cross Sheep to be in my possession soon enough. Going for Moulin Glacier, and I hit the Dark Ruler no more out of his hand. Draw an additional card here off of the Crocosaur. Now resolving the Avarice to put back all three Dragoons. Upstart into one more card. And then using, uh, you know, the uh, the Moray to draw into more cards. Putting Megalo on board. Just to give myself a Mizuchi target again. Uh, could have possibly gone for an Appaloosa setup here as well. Wasn't playing in the time being, but again, still... I've got the Mizuchi, and I've got a Toad Negate. I've got the Double Pop from the Ravenous Crocosaur. He's down two cards. Things are looking good. All my goons are back into the deck, and I've already started to go into them again. Um, but yeah, still uh, really, really cool uh, to see how well Mermels is shaping up post-Eternity Code. So yeah, that is going to do it for all the replays in this video. Of course, an entirely Mermel-themed episode uh, featuring and showing off the power and capability of Mermel's post-Eternity Code. The deck is going to be very, very strong. Not tier one, but way, way more just overall better and in more enjoyable to play in my opinion. So this is, I believe, uh, the list that I used in most of those replays. I believe the uh, current format Mermel profile should probably already be up at this point. If not, it should be going up very, very soon. Um, but again, the triple deep sea aria, uh, it just makes you, you know, six copies, seven copies of Prince with the one for one, five copies of Diva, turns any water monster into the best card in your entire deck. Uh, and then playing the two new synchros, the Adamation Rise Drag Eye. I think this card is a great staple, especially for going first versions. And the Crocosaur pairs so well with the Draco Sack, of course, to be able to pull off that draw three combo. Pot of Avarice, absolutely amazing in here. And Cross Sheep, couldn't ask for a better Link 2, honestly, to pair with the Instant Fusion. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you did. Let me know what your favorite replay was down in the comment section below. And don't forget to check out those Twitch clips. Also, most importantly... Do not forget uh, to come hang out during our charity live stream that I'll be doing on February 9th on my Twitch. Link to that down in the description below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It's always one to kill. Sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one.